Okay, so let me kind of go so over some things that generally get screwed up with this. Okay, and this is this on the front, five, six, and seven, because all, they all two, 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 play square root. So here's the point on five, six, and seven. The square root of that. So here's the ramp, right? It's rolled off. So here's what's most important. That makes sense. So that the ball has left the ramp. So once the ball leaves the ramp, what's the only force acting on that ball? Gravity. Okay? This is it. Now, you don't know the mass of the ball. You, don't, you, don't, you can't calculate the magnitude of it. But that's it. Now, and it, here's the most common misconception. Everybody goes, well, the ball is moving in that direction. There has to be a force acting on it. Yeah, was there a force initially to make it move in that direction? Yes, there was. Okay, legitimately. There was a force acting on that ball to make it move in that direction. I'll give you that. Okay, because if without a force, it wasn't going to move in that direction. But once it's left the ramp, okay, once it has left the ramp, what's keeping it moving in that direction? Inertia, okay? And inertia is not a force. Inertia is a property of matter that says, hey, Mother Nature is lazy. I want to keep that velocity vector, whatever it is. So don't draw a force acting in this direction. There isn't. Once it leaves the ramp, there is no force acting on it. It's like if I take this ball, right, and I throw it to Honus, you ready? Okay? Once it leaves my hand, Am I capable of producing any horizontal force on that ball? Unless I have superpowers. Unless I have superpowers, which I can only use for good and not evil. And so I'm not going to waste them on throwing the ball. So that's it. Now, that's it. There's nothing else. Now, but here's what's going to be important. The next thing that you want to draw is the acceleration vector. This is where one drives the other. If this is the direction of my force vector, what's the direction of my acceleration vector? Exactly. Same. Pointing straight down. Okay? That's it. And what's the value of that acceleration? Yeah. yeah. So you just put my acceleration is whatever gravitational is caused by gravity. Okay? That's it. That's all you have to have. Don't make this more complicated. Because whatever happens with this unbalanced force is what drives your acceleration vector. Okay? That's it. It's a, it's a simple, but it's a very profound truth. Now, the next thing you want to do on number six is you want to draw your velocity vectors. Now, here's what's going to be important. These are the velocity vectors after it has left the ramp. So this is where one drives the next. So here's zero meters per second. So on here's the situation. You have one that you're going to draw, and you have one that's going to be shot out like this. Here's your horizontal velocity. So here's the deal. What's the only way that you can change the slope of any velocity time graph? Acceleration. No, 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 no. No. What's the only way that you can, listen to me very carefully, what's the only way that you can change the slope of a velocity time graph? Change direction. Change direction. Oh, no. Change the forces. Change the forces. The forces. Because to change the slope of a velocity time graph means that you're changing what? Acceleration. You're changing the acceleration. Well, net force equals mass, times, mass acceleration. times acceleration. So the only way that you can change the slope of a velocity time graph is to change the acceleration. The only way to change the acceleration is to change the net force. Is it accelerating on a velocity mm -hmm. time graph if it's sloping? Yeah, but that's not what I'm asking about. So the only way that you can change the slope of a velocity time graph is to change the acceleration, and to do that you can change the force. So here's the deal. So if you're talking about horizontal motion, on either one of those, whether it's dropped or shot out horizontally, is there any force acting horizontally? No. So guess what? Whatever velocity it has at the beginning is going to be whatever velocity it has at the end. Because horizontally, there's no forces. Without any forces horizontally, there's no acceleration horizontally. Therefore, your velocity time graph is a straight line. Okay. Now, is there an unbalanced force vertically? Yes. 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 Is it going to be a change in your vertical velocity? Yes. yes, because there's an acceleration, because there's an unbalanced force. So this is where one drives the next, drives the next. Okay.
Cool with that? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, the uh, make sure on number one on that back side where I say where you're going to you're going to like the first one you're going to horizontal velocity is going to be doubled. Do one of two things: either recalculate the values, or just tell me, oh, it's going to double, it's going to increase by the square root of 40. I don't care. Okay. Tell me something. Just don't say, oh, it's going to increase or decrease. Now, when you get to the question about number four with the divers at Acapulco, that answer should be a little bit above four meters per second, which, which is a good thing because that means they're capable of doing it. Because if that velocity had worked out to be like 10 meters per second, don't do it, okay? Unless you're a world-class sprinter and you're running at top speed, it ain't going to happen, okay? You still got to have a decent velocity to pull it off for something, okay? But at least it's capable of doing it, right? Because, you know, with the cliffs and here, you know, you're driving off like this, you know, all these rocks. This is going to be a one-time screw-up, okay? If you don't fear the rocks, you, you will not make that mistake again, yeah. okay? That's just the core. Go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> what? Big money. Is it go big or go home? Yeah, go, well, in that case, go to the ambulance. Yes. Uh, how fast, like, so that's like realistic, right? Like oh, yeah. Around four I mean, meters per second. Who, came, who, who ran? I did. And I was at like just over seven yeah. meters yeah. per second. Yeah, that was, that was like a dead sprint, though, right? Yeah. I mean, a pretty good. Yeah. That was a pretty yeah. good sprint. Okay, cool. Yeah, and you want to err on the side of caution. Yeah. 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 Well, great. I have a question on the second part of the, the, the height of the cliff was doubled. I said, so is it okay if I said like you get increased by percentage value? That's what I did. No, no, I don't want percentages. No, I, no, no, no. But I also had enough. No, I, I don't want percentages. No, you can say it doubles, you know, something like that. But don't, don't play the percentage games. Okay. Okay. Anything else going once, going twice? What, Michael? On the front or on the back? Okay. So here's the deal. So here's Bubba, right? He's going to go like this. Okay. So you know he's in the air for 1.2 seconds, right? Well, you know distance equals 1 half a t squared plus v naught time. Now, here's what's important. And we talked about this yesterday. If you're going to use that acceleration as g, if you're any calculation involving little g, you either wor you only worry about the vertical distance, or you worry about the vertical velocity. Okay. So here's here's the common mistake: is that you all try and plug in the horizontal velocity in for this when it's not, okay? This is, it's the old adage, what happens in the x stays in the x, what happens in the y stays in the y. So if you look on that problem number three, you've got a horizontal velocity of 5.6 meters per second. If you're using this as 9.8 meters per second squared, do not put 5.6 meters, meters per second in for here, okay? Because that's your horizontal velocity, not your vertical velocity. So you know the time, you know your acceleration, you know your initial velocity is zero, boom, find your distance. Okay? Now, on number two, notice that I gave you like four significant digits in the height and three significant digits in uh, the range. So how many significant digits do you think I want in your answers on number two? Three. Let me give you a hint. If you put 0 0.5, how many significant digits does that have? One. one. Not that that might be one of your answers, but I'm just saying. Okay. Anything else? Go once. Go twice. Sold. I enjoy golf, but I can just... When are we going to the range? Oh, no. I always improve on my golf game, but then I end up with the same speed. I know. I know that you're just sitting... You're, you're happy to kill more in every ball. Oh. That's why you said, you you just do it. Dude, that's my no. problem with golf. Is I always feel like I'm getting better, but I never do better out on the course. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Sine gets me VY, what can I use to get VX? Um, Sine gets me VY. Are we using our calculus? Yep. Then, yeah. No. Wait, sorry. Uh, cosine. You sure? I think so. You should be. Okay? Because again, I've got this hypotenuse, I've got the angle I'm trying to find the side adjacent to, right? Mm -hmm. So Vx is going to equal the vector times the cosine of the angle. Now, here's what's going to be important. We're going to get these numbers. We're going to get our Vx and then we're going to get our Vy. Once you, use, once you find that Vx and once you find that Vy, and you see why later, but I'm just planning the siege. That 9.2 meters per second is dead to you, okay? Don't use it again. This is a gateway vector that we're going to use to get to these, okay? That's all it is. Once you use it to find these, toss it, okay? Don't ever use it again. we got to have it, but don't ever use it again. So, Hunter? How'd you find it? What? The 9.2? Yeah. I just, get, I just know that's the launch velocity out of that marble launcher. Yeah, I just, I just gave you that number. And I know I launched it at a 40 degree angle. Okay, so let's get some numbers here. So somebody take 9.2 meters per second times the sine of 40 degrees. 5.91. What'd you get? 5.91 meters per second. Okay, so call it 5.9 meters per second. Okay, kind of cool. Now, is my Vx going to be bigger or smaller than 5.9? Probably bigger. 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 Why? Because it's, it's less than 45 degrees. <laughs> oh, no, it's just me trying to get it out. Okay. It's less than 45 degrees, which means that your Vx is greater. Yeah, because it's a 40 degree angle. If it was 45, they'd both be the same, right? A little bit less, okay. So I'm going to take... 9.2 meters per second times the cosine of 40 degrees. What do we get, Greg? 7.05. What? 7.05. So call it 7.0. Okay. Now, literally, once you get these numbers, 5.9 and 7.0, mark out the 9.2. Don't ever use it again. Okay, it's done. Sponsors, don't use it. Okay, you will never use it again. Ever. Okay. Now, I want you to pretend that none of this exists. It's gone. Okay? We're back getting ready for the acceleration test. And I'm going to launch the ball straight up at 5.9 meters per second. Okay? Boom. Straight up. 5.9. I want to find the time up. I want to find the time down. I want to find the max height. And I want to figure out how high it is at one second into the flight. Okay? I want to find all of that from one number. And again, don't worry about projectile motion. It's dead to you. Don't worry about it. Okay? So, let's just talk. Is my time up going to be bigger or smaller than one second? Before I do any calculations at all, is my time up going to be bigger or smaller than one second? Shively. Why? Uh, no. Acceleration, 9.8. So? And that's 1.5. So one second would be 9.8. Yeah, let, 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 let's, let's articulate it a little bit better, yeah. okay? So, vertically, on this velocity time graph, where's my velocity time graph going to start? Yeah, it's going to start at 5.9 meters per second. Then what's it going to do? It's either going to slope up, it's going to slope down, or it's going to be a horizontal line. What's it going to do? Me? Yeah. I'm not off the hook yet. Wait, are we tossing the ball up? What's I'm the tossing the ball straight up at 5.9 meters per second. <clears throat> oh, it'll go down. Like this? 
Yeah. What's the slope of the line? Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Yeah, because this strange rock that we're on creates an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So here's the question. Nick, where is the ball at that point? It's next site. Why? Because that's it needs to slow down, and that's where it basically slows down enough to change direction. Beautiful answer. Okay? Velocity is zero. We're going to change direction and set its maximum height. Okay? So, again, if you like the analogy of money, mom and dad are going to make you spend $9.80 per second that you're in the mall. But they only send you with $5.90. So, how long are you going to be at the mall before you're bankrupt? A little less than a second. Yeah, something less than a second. So, I know when I calculate my time up, it's going to be less than a second. Okay? I don't know what it is yet. I don't care what it is. But I know it's going to be less than a second. Okay. So, Olivia, how can I find my time up? That is true. You speak words of truth. <laughs> oh, I can use V equals V naught plus AT. You speak words of truth. Now, here's my question. What's my initial velocity? 5.9 or 9.2? Why? In the, in the, rhymes with the article. Vertical. There you go. <laughs> what happens in the Y stays in the Y. So, Olivia, how do I going to get time by itself? Take B minus V naught over A. B minus V naught over A, and that's going to equal time. So, what's my final velocity? Vonda, what's my final velocity when it reaches its maximum height? No, no, no. So help me finish that calculator. What's the final velocity when it reaches its maximum height? Don't make this difference. Zero. Yes. Yes. I know you're wearing tie dye. That might affect your. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was in the sixty. I was alive in the sixty. It was a jacket. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was only three. But yeah, I was still. You're like three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was hit though. Anyway. So. So. By about 5.9 meters per second. So, Vonda, what's my acceleration on the way up? Don't make this difficult. Oh, 9.8. Possibly. <laughs> negative 9.8. Yes, there we go. Okay, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So, great, take 5.9 and divide it by 9.8. Uh, 0 0.60. 0 0.60 seconds. Okay? So that kind of matches with what we said, right? We said the time up is going to be less than a second because the initial velocity is less than 9.8 meters per second. Okay, that's cool. So at this point, we've got our time up 0 0.60 seconds. Nice. Okay? Now, so assuming, and this is a key assumption, Assuming that Hunter caught that ball at the same height that when it was launched, and that's a key assumption, if it returns back to that same height, what's going to be my time down? 0 0.60 seconds, right? So my total time would be 1.2 okay? seconds. So I got it. 0 0.60 seconds going up, I got 0 0.60 seconds going down. Got that number. Now, how can I calculate the maximum height? Leslie, how can I calculate my maximum height, but I don't want to use that time because I'm suspect of that time? So how can I find the maximum height without using time? This is true. you got to narrow it down, though, because there's a lot of them. Oh, that equation! Yeah. Like that! Okay? So, I'm going to start over because I'm going to know the room. So, boom, 5.9 meters per second. That's kind of cool. So, I know that's my V naught. 
and my final velocity is going to be zero at the top plus two AD. Okay, so here's the million dollar question. Great. How am I going to get distance by itself? Um, you are going to first. You're going to want to subtract the v naught squared. Okay. And then you're going to put all of that under. Two, we're, we're doing distance over yep. today. And I want to get my height. Everybody cool with that? Good. So I'm going to have zero squared minus. Divided by two times. So great. Square five point nine and divided by nineteen nineteen point six. Nineteen point six. Yeah. Uh, point one two four. No, no, it's going to be bigger than point one two four. Oh, point seven eight. Oh, yeah. I can live with that. One point seven eight. Oh, square. Yeah. How about one point eight? Seems reasonable. So, if you consider here, we launched it here, right? And it got pretty close to the ceiling, okay? So, that kind of like matches the physical model. So, we're here, boom, came up, resistant, maximum height on its way down. So, we got 1.8 meters, okay? Okay. So, <laughs> now, Here's what I want you to realize. So we did all of these calculations assuming that this ball was launched straight up at 5.9 meters per second. Okay, all these calculations were true. Everybody's comfortable with this. So here's what I want you to realize. Is that when I take that ball and I launch it with a vertical component of 5.9 meters per second, okay? And let's say over here I launch a ball straight up with that exact same velocity, they would be mirror images of each other vertically. So both of these would go up to the same height of 1.8 meters. Okay? They would both reach the exact same height. They would both take 0 0.60 seconds to go up, and they would both take 0 0.60 seconds to go down. So gravity does not differentiate in how it handles this. So if I launch it straight up or I have this, does not matter. It's the exact same calculation. So, but here's the importance. What happens in the Y stays in the Y. What happens in the X stays in the X. So it's only this vertical component right here that's affected by the gravitational field. The horizontal component doesn't change at all. Got that. That's one of the most vital things that you have to understand. Now, the next thing we want to do is we wanted to figure out that height at one second. Now, here's the deal. The total flight time, we had 0 0.60 seconds going up, and we've got 0 0.60 seconds going down. So at one second, where's the ball at? Way up or on its way down? It's on its way down because we've, we've hit that maximum height. So one second, I'm somewhere over here. Okay, I'm somewhere over here. I don't know where, don't care. All I know is I'm somewhere over here. Because I'm on the way down, should my height be a negative number? No. Breathe. No. Why not? Because only your velocity would be negative. Bingo. Because it's still, is it still above the ground? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It started to fall, but guess what? It's still above the ground. Okay, so don't think, oh, it's on its way down. I should get a negative height. I'm going to have, it's exactly what Bree said. Is my velocity going to be negative? Yes. Yeah. Because it's changed direction, but the height is still going to be above the ground. So, there's only one way and only one way to do this. And that's to use distance equals one half at squared plus b naught time. That is the only way to find that height at a particular point in time. There is no other way to do this. None. Zero, zip, not. Now, here's what's going to be wrong. 
what you're going to do wrong is you're going to make that a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay? Why does that have to be negative? Because down. Yeah, that's that's how we define the system, right? Because that slope of that velocity time graph is a negative value. So this has to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then you got one second squared. Now, here's the next thing that you're going to do wrong. And don't. You're going to take that 9.2 meters per second and plug that in here for V0. Okay? That's what you're going to do wrong. But it isn't the 9.2 meters per second that's affected by this rate. What's the only thing that's affected by that acceleration? Yeah, just that vertical component. The horizontal component isn't changing. The overall launch velocity is changing, but not at this rate. So it's only the vertical component. So this is where you've got to come in here and put, what was that vertical component? 5.9? 5.9? Yeah. Okay. Meters per second times one second. Okay. Do not plug in the, that launch velocity of 9.2. You only plug in the 5.9 meters per second. That's it. All right. Now, interesting thing would happen. What if? Let's see. Wait, what? what? Is that value? Sorry. Is that value given? Oh no, we calculated. Yeah, we found it. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Now, what if? What would you get for that value of height if you plugged in 0 0.60 seconds? Where did you say Marie? Why? Because it takes 0.60 seconds to get to the maximum height. And the value of the maximum height was? Yeah. So since that's my maximum height, if I plug in half the time, that's what I'm going to be at my maximum height. Now, what if I plugged in 1.2 seconds? Zero. Zero. Now, let's say I put in 1.4. Then it'd be a negative, which would mean what? Yeah, so on that one, I would launch it. Hunter didn't catch it, because he's a punter, right? So he goes... Uh, he's a kicker. Oh, kicker, my bad. Kicker. My bad, my bad. So he missed it, and it goes, quick, all the way down to the ground. Okay? So that's possible, like if you're up on a cliff, and you shoot it, and it goes further down. So it is possible to get a negative value from this. That just means that it's below where you shot it. Cool with this. OK. All right. So we know how high it is. So what did what, you get out of this, by the way? It's 5.9 plus negative 4. It should be 1. 1. 1. Love the math. So at this point, it's 1 meter high. OK? So it would be about like, yeah. All right. So, we know the height, we've got all this going on. Now, there's one thing left to do. I want to find the range. I want to know how far this thing is going to go. So, range equals Vx time. Now, let, let's step back for a second. What's my horizontal velocity time graph going to look like? A horizontal line. Where at? Above uh, zero. Just randomly? Well, at the, the found value that you got. And what's the value of my Vx? 7 point something. 7.0, I think we decided. 7.0, okay. So that's going to be at 0. Now, how long, me just a second, how long is it going to have that velocity? 1.2 seconds. Yeah, because total time, right? Okay, so this is going to have that velocity the entire time that it's in the air. Now, here's, here, here's the crux of this whole thing. My vertical velocity versus time graph does this. My horizontal velocity time graph does a horizontal line. So why does this slope down, and why does that stay at a horizontal line? So there's a different amount of forces acting on each one. Okay. I hate the word different. Oh. Here's the velocity y has, a, uh, has the force of gravity acting upon it, but well, velocity x has uh, no forces, so it's at constant velocity. Okay. That's much better. Because they're different, or it changes. No. Okay. So, this velocity.
velocity time graph has a slope to it. Yes, you have an unbalanced vertical force. This doesn't have a horizontal line because it's not accelerating. Now, this is important. There are two situations that you can generate a horizontal line on a velocity time graph. What are the two unique situations that you can use to generate a horizontal line on a velocity time graph in terms of forces? Net forces uh, are zero. Net the net force is going to be zero, but what are the two ways that I can have a net force in zero? Either all forces add up to be zero, or you just have no forces in all acting. Exactly. Either I throw this ball, and as soon as it leaves my hand, there's just no forces acting on it, or it's like this weight, and I pushed it at a constant velocity. Mathematically, you can't tell the difference between the two. If you have a velocity time graph like this, you don't know what's happening. You don't know if it's all the forces add up to equal to zero, or if it's just the inertia keeping it going. But those are the only two ways that you can generate a horizontal line. But as soon as you see a sloping line on a velocity time graph, what's, what do you know has to happen? What is that net force not equal? Zero. 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 So if this slopes, your net force doesn't equal to zero. If it's a horizontal line, your net force does equal to zero, but you don't know what the situation is. Okay? All right, let's cool with this. Now, so I want to find the range. Now, remember, all of this is, all of this is, is that you're saying distance equals velocity times time. That's all you're saying. And it's this big fancy thing that we call range. Okay? That's all. It's just this fancy thing called, called range. And then Vx and time. Now, you can you either view it as this, or if you're a geometry person, you can go, oh, area is length times width. Because on this velocity time graph, we're just finding this area. Oh, okay, that's cool. Here's my length, 1.2 seconds. Here's my height, 7.0 meters per second. It's the area of a rectangle. Doesn't make any difference. So if I take 7 times 1.2, I get 8.4. So my range, what was my VX? 7.0 times 1.20 seconds, and you get we say 8.40 meters. So that's how far it's going to go. Now, can I figure out, let's go back. I'm going to, oh. So we're going to start over and I'll kind of clean this whole thing up. So this is a 40 degree angle. 9.2 meters per second. The Vx was, what, 7.0 yeah. meters per second, and Vy was 5.9? Yeah. Now, as it flies through the air, okay, landed, as this thing flies through the air, what happens to my Vx? Just the same Vx all the time. Kind of boring, but it's the same thing even when it lands. Okay? Which is why our velocity time graph is a horizontal line, right? Now, it starts at 5.9 meters per second. As soon as it leaves the marble launcher, Matt, as soon as it leaves the marble launcher, what happens to that velocity? What does it start to do? It shrinks. It shrinks. So it's going to go to 5.9. And then to like four, and then to two. Now, at the very top, does it have a vertical velocity? No. Why? What's it doing? Stop, Stop and change direction. Now, it stops vertically, but is it still moving? Yeah. Because yeah. it still has a horizontal component to it. Now, after it reaches that apex, then what's it going to happen to your velocity back? Yeah. Then they're going to. Going to, going to go negative and get bigger. Now, if it launches at positive 5.9, assuming that it returns back to the same height, and that's a huge assumption, assuming that it returns back to the same height, what's going to be the vertical component of my velocity over here? Negative 5.9. Yeah, negative 5.9. And a miracle of miracles, if I were to find that resultant, 
What do you think I'd get for the result? Negative 9.2. Or I'd just get 9.2 because it's just like the speed thing, right? So that would be 9.2 meters per second. Okay. Now, what are, what are my acceleration vectors going to do throughout the flight? A little? Let, let's articulate this. My acceleration vectors. It's going to slow down, it's going to stop, and it's going to accelerate again. Okay? This, you, work, you speak words of truth. So, when it launches, what's the direction of my acceleration vector? Straight down, or kind of at an angle-ish? At an angle. Angle up, angle down? Down. So, maybe something like that? Yeah. Everybody cool with this? No. No? no? Bad? Bad. 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 Very bad. bad. Because if this is the direction out. of your acceleration vector, <laughs> what are you implying? <laughs> That's the direction of your force, that gravity is acting this way. No, wind does. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so gravity is pulling it down at the same time the wind is pushing it that way. Right. <laughs> we're in Kansas. Well, we're not I realize we're in Kansas. I've been here for a while. So let's make that one go away. So Shively, you were the first one to shake your head no. What's your alternative acceleration vector? It must be straight down. And what would the value of that acceleration vector be? Zero. Zero. Meters per second squared. As it goes up and then starts yes. back down, what happens to that acceleration vector? Nothing. It stays the same. Yes, why? Because Why are you talking like you're God? <laughs> because acceleration is constant. Why? Because the gravitational acceleration doesn't change. Why? Because it has the vert the vertical is the same. It doesn't have any effect. Like, you're making this difficult. Yeah. Why does my why does my acceleration caused by gravity not change? Because gravity doesn't change. Yeah, the force of gravity doesn't change. So all the way through the flight. Now, at the top, when it's at its very peak, Felix, when it's at the very peak, is it still accelerating? Which way? Yeah, even at the very top. Ah, here's an interesting concept. If you were to draw and measure the angle at the very top between your horizontal velocity and your acceleration, what would you get? Yeah. Now, how many times this is your acceleration vector and your speed vector are going to be at 90 degree angles? Because otherwise, they're not. But it's only at the top. Because your speed is only your horizontal velocity at that point because there's no vertical. So this is the only point at the top where those are at right angles to each other. So you can find the so results of that. You can find the... No, no, you can't find the result of a velocity and acceleration vector. Speed like the tangent line? Yeah, basically. It, which is the, like, the result of your x and y components of your velocity. So as it starts back down, what's going to happen to your vy? It's going to get... Now, here's an interesting idea. If you want to, once you find like that top, you can view it as like a lemming problem. Okay? You can't because once it starts here, it's like the lemming problems that we worked yesterday. Because once it starts to fall, what's your initial vertical velocity? Zero. So here, it becomes a lemming problem. Okay? That's it. It's just a lemming problem because it's going to start at zero and then it's going to fall. Okay. So. Let's go back to our range calculation. So with our range, what do we get? We're going to take the Vx, which is 7 meters per second, and multiply that by 1.2 seconds, and we got 8.4? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be the horizontal distance that it's going to travel. Now, here's an interesting thought. At one, at one second, we said it was 1 meter high, right? How far is it horizontally at the end of one second? Over. 
Seven. 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 So it would be at seven point zero meters. If it is seven meters, why? Because R equals dx times. At the end of one second, if you're traveling seven meters per second, guess what? You're going to be at seven meters. That's a rough concept. Okay. So at the end of one second, you would have traveled seven meters because the total time is eight point four. So you would have traveled seven meters, and you are one meter high. Go with that. Okay. Now here's the deal: when you get a problem like this, and you're going to. When you get that 9.2 meters per second and that angle, the first thing that you do is you deconstruct that vector. You find your x, and then you find your y, and then you never speak of this again. Vertically, it's like you're launching something straight up at 5.9 meters per second. That's the only number that you worry about to find your maximum height and your time. The only time you're going to use that vx is when you have something dealing with that horizontal motion. Got it? Yeah. Good. Okay, stop that. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, dude. Oh, yeah, we're going. He just pressed the button before I could get it. Ooh, I was Matt, right rude. there. Rude. Uh, sorry. Okay. I mean, if Max would do his job, yeah. I wouldn't have to do this. I was on my way to do my freaking job. Okay. So let me set the stage on problem number one. You have two baseballs that are being pitched. Both of these are pitched exactly horizontally. Okay, they're limbing problems. Okay, they're limbing problems. They are both going to be caught by the catcher. Okay, so don't tell me, oh, the one with the bigger VX goes farther. No, they're both going to make it from the pitcher to the catcher. Range is the same. Okay, range is the same. So the only thing I'm trying to figure out is that why does the ball that's slower, why is that going to go lower in the strike zone than the one that's thrown faster? Okay? So do not say anything about, oh, the faster one goes further. No. It doesn't go further. They're both going to be caught by the catcher. Now, on problem number two, On problem number two, here's your setup. You've got a frictionless puck, okay, like this, moving on a table. It's already moving, okay? Don't push it. It's already moving, okay? It's not at rest. It's already moving. Don't fight me on this one. It's the biggest issue kids have. It's already moving. Now, I've given you the mass of the hockey puck, 0.1 kilograms. So what you want to do is you're going to set up a scale, and on part A, the only thing you're going to draw are the forces acting on the hockey puck as it's already moving on a frictionless surface and then two vectors after it falls off. Now, on that, that last one where I've got the asterisk, what I'm telling you is that it has not hit the ground yet. You can slide a piece of paper underneath it, but that's it. But it has not hit the ground. It's fallen 1.199999 meters. Okay? Not 1.2, but 1.999. Close enough. You're going to set up a scale, and you're going to draw these, listen to me, McGriddle, with a ruler. Okay? I'm going to see your scale. Did you let one centimeter equal a newton? Did you let one centimeter equal ten newtons? I don't know. Okay? You're going to set up a scale. Now, when you get to B, on B, you're going to draw the acceleration vectors. So your acceleration vectors are going to be driven by your force vectors. So if you look at the force vectors up above and your forces are balanced out, what's your acceleration going to be? Zero. Zero. If you look at your force vectors up above and they're not balanced, guess what? You're going to accelerate. Oh, that's kind of cool. Now, when you get to C, these are going to be your velocity vectors. These are three completely separate diagrams. It's already moving at five meters per second. So you're going to draw your velocity vectors up there on the table. Then you're going to have your diagrams 
for your velocities after they have fallen, one at point 0.6 and one at point 0.2. So it flew off horizontally. I want to know how fast it's going after it's fallen 0.6 meters, and then how fast it's fallen after it's traveled 1.2. Okay? Hip with that. Now, on the back side, got some questions to answer about that. When you get to 5 and 6, you're launching at 32 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees, determine the total flight time, max height, and range. So at number five, what is the first thing you're going to do with 32 meters per second and an angle of 30 degrees? Find your X and Y. Are you ever going to use the 32 meters per second past that? No. No. It is dead to you. No, I still don't. Okay? It is dead to you. Don't use it. Six is going to be the same way. Okay? Now, when you get to problem number eight, let me kind of set up number eight. This eight is the most complex problem on here. So the cliff is 20 meters high, and you're going to shoot it, and it's going to go like this. Okay? So your launch velocity is 40 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees. 40 meters per second, 60 degrees. So again, what's the first thing that you're going to do? Lead your horizontal or vertical components. Decompose this thing. Deconstruct it. Find your X, find your Y components. First thing that you're going to do. So the first thing I want you to do is find the range. So here's the deal. You want to figure out how far this thing is going to travel. So you got to do range equals VX time. Now, the end calculation is simple but you got to do a whole bunch of stuff to get there. This time has to be the total amount of time. So you have to, this is like that ball off the building problem. So you're going to have to find the time that it takes to go up and then add that to the time that it takes to fall down. Which one's going to be bigger? Time up or time down? Yeah. Why? Because it's falling a greater distance. Yeah, it's a greater distance, right? Now, what I would recommend is that once it reaches its maximum height, then it becomes like a limbing problem like you all did yesterday. So if you don't know how to find the time down, go back and look at your notes from yesterday. Oh, it's a limbing problem. Because once it starts to fall, what's your initial velocity? Zero. So if you can find your time up, you're also going to have to find the maximum height. Don't forget to add in the 20 meters. So there's a whole bunch of things that you have to do on this problem. To end up. Did my huh? loan computer get left in here during Encore? I didn't see any. Okay. Okay. All right. So, you're going to find that time up, you're going to find that time down, you're going to find your maximum height, because you've got to have the maximum height to find the time. Then, this is the last step is the easiest. Then, on B, this is where you got to find the max height anyway, so you gotta have, you're already going to know that number. Now, when you get to C, what is the speed of the ball when it lands? So over here, when this ball lands, what, what two velocities is it going to have? When this ball lands, you're going to have what? You're going to have a Vx and you're going to have a Vy. What I want is the resultant of those velocities. Now, think this through. Is this vertical component here when it lands going to be bigger or smaller than that vertical component when it's launched? Bigger. Bigger. Why? Because it's falling for a greater distance. It's, it's falling a greater distance. So you know when you find this Vy, it has to be bigger than that Vy when it took off. Now, you're going to find the speed, which is going to be that result. So you launched at 40. When it lands here, is this answer here going to be bigger or smaller than 40? Not going to be the same as 40. What's the only way? That's the only way it could, you could have an answer of 40. It'll be bigger. It'll be bigger. Why? Vy is bigger. Yeah, is your Vx any bigger? No. no. But your Vy is going to be bigger, so your overall launch velocity has to be, or landing velocity has to be bigger. Because Vy is bigger with the same Vx. Okay? 
All right, I'm done. You're on your own.